heading downtown, uh, going to go to a Thorns game, which is women's soccer. I am, however, trying this new phone. It's a Sony one. It has a 16 megapixel front camera with optical image stabilization. Now, there's only like two phones made that have optical stabilization on the front camera, so I'm hoping this thing will work better. It's really wide angle, so you can really see the clutter in here. I figure holding a phone on a selfie stick is a lot less conspicuous than running around with a camera with like a screen folded out. I don't think they want you filming games, but I'm not gonna be filming the game. I'm just gonna be filming what's going on. So anyways, uh, I think this will actually work pretty well for that, hopefully. Well, headed down to this soccer game and a friend was gonna try and use Lyft to get there. That's L-Y-F-T. But I think the accessible service here in Portland is still screwed up. He's requested a ride and they haven't moved yet. So I'm gonna hang out here a little bit longer and see what happens if he can get a hold of him on the phone or not. And if not, I might just have to go pick him up because it, it, it's frustrating. Like there's rules saying that they have to have accessible service, but it never works. Well, I made it to the transit center. Uh, some old man parked downstairs though and took up two of the disabled spots. So I had to park up here on the roof. There technically aren't any disabled parking spots up here, but the way the lot's designed, I could kind of park on an end so that I was able to at least deploy my lift to the side without a problem. As with most Triminet facilities, this elevator smells amazing. They have the trough in here. <laughs> well, that was a successful adventure down to the Thorns soccer game. I've been to the Timbers before, but never the women's soccer. But it was actually uh, it was actually pretty interesting. It was a good game to watch for sure. Apparently, today is going to be an impromptu range test on this new chair. Uh, I've already gone six and a half miles. Uh, I went over to a friend's place and we ran around some trails in his neighborhood. Um, I'm only down two bars on the battery and I've gone six and a half miles. I'm gonna go over to West Marine, which I think is about a mile and a half from here. I need to get one of their oil change kits that they use for boats. The green van's been giving me some issue and I'm having to put some additives in the oil to try and see if I can clear up an issue. I think some of the oil passages got clogged up on it and I'm getting some wrist pin noise and a couple of rods that are knocking. So I'm gonna dump in some glue that supposedly cleans up stuff and see what happens, but it's gonna be maybe a quart and a half over full. So I know West Marine has those kits for changing oil on boats because you can't pull the drain plug on a boat because the engine is too low. So I'm gonna head over there and uh, we'll see what range actually does on this chair. These motors are loud. All right, gone uh, seven and a half miles now, and the battery is down about a third. I can definitely tell it's not full charged. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I don't not have power, but I can tell it's not quite as snappy as it would be if it was fully charged. Now gone eight miles, and the battery just dropped off very sharply. Uh, I've only got three bars left. Um, it's right up here in the next block. We'll see how it's gonna be getting back. Worst case scenario, I can always call a lift. $60. Have a good one. See 
so the kit they had was 60 bucks and the tube actually is not long enough um, to reach down into the crankcase. So I'm gonna hit Home Depot and see what they have. Now, typically at Home Depot, uh, if you're looking for something a little bit weird, uh, you have to just use the app. Because if you ask somebody about it, they're not gonna know. And they actually carry around phones that have a copy of the app on it. But in this case, I was pleasantly surprised. The lady actually knew exactly what I was talking about. They didn't have the exact size of tubing that I wanted, but I found something that I think is gonna work all right. And they also did not have the fluid transfer pumps, but I got something that you hook up to your drill and uh, it kind of works as a pump. Now oil's not real good for those, it's designed for water, like for garden hoses, but it came with a little adapter for a pretty small tube and the thing's held together with screws, so when I'm done with it, um, I can just pull it apart and clean it out and it should be good. I'm taking a slightly different route on the way back. I'm trying to avoid a hill. So we've gone exactly nine miles and uh, the better gauge has gone back up one bar. So we've got four bars left. The, uh, the large hill that I'm avoiding will help, but there is a small one that's pretty steep. It's only about 40 feet long, but I think we'll be able to make it. Oop. Almost got stuck on these train tracks. Even though the front casters on this chair are really big, I was at a pretty sharp angle going over them and you need to hit them straight across to keep that from happening. All right, this hill's coming up here. Now, it's pretty steep, even for this chair, but it's only maybe 40 feet long, so this will be the test to see if the thing will power down when the battery's low and you try to climb a hill. All right, here we go. Still maintaining five miles an hour. Hey, no problem. It's not a problem. We're up to 9.7 miles. The one obnoxious thing about the sidewalks around here is, I don't know if they do it for, I don't know, to make it more aesthetically pleasing, but they're curvy and with electric wheelchairs, you get the best possible range going straight at full speed. The more speeding up and slowing down and maneuvering you do, the more power it uses. So ideally, if you want the best range, you wanna go as straight as possible and at full speed without slowing down or stopping or doing anything else. And all the bumps and stuff too make a big difference because you gotta slow down to hit those. So it wouldn't seem like it would make much of a difference, but it can actually actually make a pretty dramatic impact on your range. This is kind of interesting. I cut through a few of these business parks and I've always seen these trailers sitting here, but these things are giant batteries. Look at this. It says right on the side, it's a 50 kilowatt, 400 kilowatt hour battery. And over here we've got 208 volts and 480 volts. This building has some serious backup power and there's two of these trailers sitting here. That's interesting. It's uh, That's a lot of battery power right there. All right, so made it back, uh, gone 10.8 miles, and the battery gauge has settled just barely below half. So that's not too bad. Um, I probably wouldn't run around too much more at this low charge, but uh, here, let me show you what I got. This sort of poly, semi-rigid tubing, it's what you'd use for like an ice maker in a fridge. It's pretty big diameter, but I think 
this will fit in the uh, dipstick tube on the van. I got this mobile drill pump. It's made for water, but once again, motor oil is not gonna be excessively good for it. You hook the thing into the drill and it's got an inlet and an outlet and it'll pump for you. But the key thing I noticed with this one, see how there's screws holding it together? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this thing, get the oil transferred out, then I can take this thing apart and clean it. On the way back into the building, I stopped by the recycling and grabbed a milk jug to put the used oil into. You have to have a used milk jug when you take used motor oil to the auto parts store or somewhere to dispose of it. For whatever reason, milk jugs are the preferred containers. Eh, whatever. I'm gonna write this thing out and uh, grab the drill and head outside. And now we have our graduated milk jug, one and two quarts. And here's the basic setup. Down the dipstick hole, through the pump, through the hose, into the jug. Well, that actually works surprisingly well. I got a couple quarts out. Didn't even make a mess. This pump actually works great. Well, interestingly enough, I pumped out two quarts of oil. The oil I just got changed a couple days ago, and when I checked it earlier, it was pretty clean and clear. Well, after I poured that stuff in there that's supposed to, in theory, remove any blockages or whatnot, the oil is now black. So I'm gonna go over to the oil change place, give them another 20 bucks, have them change it again, screw on a new filter, and start from square one. All that stuff floating around there is definitely going to plug up the filter if it hasn't already. And for 20 bucks, I mean, uh, it's cheap for an oil change. So I'm gonna head over there now and get it taken care of. Oh, also, the oil pressure is now pegging the top of the gauge. So sounds like to me there was some sort of blockage or something that got removed in there. Because when I fire the thing up now and give it a tiny bit of throttle, it just goes almost all the way to the top. So I think maybe we did something? I, I don't know. I I'm not saying this is any substitute for mechanical repair, but if I can make it last a little bit longer without pulling the motor out, that would be good. Well, I went down to the oil change place and they were closed. Being Sunday, I don't blame them. They closed at five o'clock. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go over there and get the oil changed first thing. And hopefully all my problems will be solved.